I'm good. Okay, the camera thing together because last time I was on live, honey, my hair was cut off. Jesus. Yes, we can see. We can see you. We got neck okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. We good. We good. See. <laughs> all right, love. Well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate your time and all of your energy tonight. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Now, before we get into it, how are you? How is your I'm day going? You know, my day was good. I'm actually training for another film right now. So everything I have a big workout and stuff like that. And it drains me. <laughs> I need like an hour at least afterwards to kind of like get my day back going. Um, but other than that, it's been really good. I live out in the marina and I get to see I have a beautiful view here. Um, so I'm just I'm really good. My spirit is well. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank I'm you. looking at the comments and I think someone said you're zoomed in a bit and it's hard for see? them to see you. See, <laughs> is you, see what I'm saying? I don't understand because it doesn't look like that for you, right? That's no. I don't know. I don't, I can't get this. I don't know why it's doing this. This is so, hold on, weird. Yeah, I think that, I mean, we can see you perfectly fine. And you look beautiful. Right. Like, thank, thank you. I appreciate it. So I'm hoping, tell me if this works, guys, because again, for our, from our end, it looks normal. But if yeah. not, let us know. I don't Keep know. Keep talking to us, y'all. But can yeah. we get right into it with you? Yeah. Let's absolutely. do it. Okay. So, Taja, your on-screen presence is so phenomenal. I mean, mm. fiery. You are regal admirable i mean we love you in the oval your character alone is just fantastic um you you truly represent black women very mm -hmm. well i mean you mm -hmm. are the on-screen representation of a black woman you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah how or what has been your driving force for picking roles such as these yeah great question thank you for that though i really appreciate it um <laughs> When I think of Black women, I think of their regal nature, as you say. Um, I think of how dynamic they are. Um, and I think how driven they are and resilient that we are, I should say. We are. Hello, we're Black women. Yes. <laughs> so for me, that's a driving force for me in picking roles is that I want someone that encompasses all of that. So yes, she could be beautiful. She could be all these other things that we celebrate. And it's not always about the lashes and the hair and the makeup and the blah, blah, blah. I want that slice of life woman, the one that's like everyday life, this is what I do. And she's resilient and she's getting over some stuff. So now you guys are really gonna see that in Priscilla for season two. Season one was like the setup. We have 15 series regulars. So there's so many different storylines moving around and you know, you're trying to stay abreast with every single one. Right. For this one, you get a chance to see Priscilla, how she started, loving her job and things like that. And then obviously there's, you know, a lot going on in her home life as well as her work life that she's <laughs> having to overcome and deal with all the while so much happening around her. So when I'm selecting roles, I, I'm drawn to their tenacity. I'm drawn to their resilience. I'm drawn to how can they overcome this? And I can really, you know, I really see the beauty in the darkness. So mm -hmm. when they're having these hard times, that's where the beauty lies for me. And I'm like, ooh, I want to play that role. Ooh, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Thank so you. So let's talk about, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about your character on Tyler Perry's The Oval, mm -hmm. uh, which congratulations has recently been renewed for a third season. Ooh, hey! Let's hey! take a moment, hey! <laughs> Ready to get it, girl. Okay. <laughs> Now, you play Priscilla Owens, who we were just speaking about, and her, her, just her amazing on-screen presence. Uh, the show follows the first family and all of the secrets and all of the lies that plagued the White House. Could you tell us a little bit more about the series and specifically more about the role that you play and the dynamic Priscilla brings? So Caliper is the Oval. Um, let me just throw this in there. This just came out. And we're renewed for, when we were renewed for season three, we're the number one scripted television show on television and cable. Let's just, on. let's on Tuesday that's nights, we right. just going, that's just free. I ain't going to charge y'all for that. I'm going to just know. throw that out there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, we are a drama. Our show is all about drama. Um, and it deals with the first family in the White House. I play Priscilla Owen, who is the resident staff supervisor. So she runs the staff in the White House. Um, mm -hmm. And she's also the head chef there. Um, so my character, per se, she is the one that tries to keep everything afloat, keep everything going. She's been working at this White House for several administrations. 
However, this particular administration is something that no one that's working there is ever used to. So we're all trying to figure out a way how to navigate it, how to keep serve at the pleasure of the hand of the president. That's our job. Mm -hmm. Um, As well as, dare I say, stay alive. Mm. (laughs) Because people are all over, you know, a lot lot happens in our White House. A lot of things get covered up and things of that nature. Um, But for me, Priscilla, she's such a... Um, as I said, resilient woman. She's a woman who loves her husband. She's a woman of integrity. She's a woman who stands for something. She stands for honesty and truth at all times. She's going to fight for her friends. Um, she's a woman that really, um, you would want to be her friend. That's the person that you want in your corner. If Priscilla's in your corner. She's mm-hmm. one of those people that's like, oh, if Priscilla says she's going to get it done. Oh, it's going to happen. You can go right. home and rest easy because that word of hers means something. Mm-hmm. And so while that, while that's who she is, we're coming into a new phase of her as everything around her is kind of tumbling down. And so now she's not able to be as poised and, and, and you know, uh, upright and keeping everything together. She's trying to do that all the while her internal conflict is in complete disarray. Wow, 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 yeah. wow. So, and it's a lot of heavy stuff going <laughs> on. Like, Ooh, Tyler Perry, don't you yes. some of the stuff you're doing to Priscilla? <laughs> Agreed, agreed. <laughs> now, the oval is shot in an exact replica of the White House. Mm-hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about the set of the oval and how detailed it is? Oh, it's about 90, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the number, I don't remember, but like 93 or 94% exact replica of the White House. Uh-oh. So as far as detailed, oh, it's, it's there. It's supremely detailed. You feel like you're literally in the Oval Office. You feel like you're walking in the White House itself. Um, You know, there's pictures of past presidents on the wall, just like if you're in the White House, there's, you know, Barack Obama on the wall. There's all these different little nuances that brings the White House together. When we were there filming for the first season, the White House was being built. So we shot everything outside of the White House before we were able to get into the White House. And it literally went up in like, it was like a time lapse. It went up all while we were there in about a week and a half or two weeks. It was insane how quickly they put this thing together. Um, But watching it, and being there um, and feeling the energy around the taping of the show and the filming of the show, all of us felt like we were on to something really special. We felt like just being in the White House was like, wow, we are, this man has built this for yeah. us, for our show. Like, this is our show. This is where we live. And this is um, where people can come and visit and be like, oh, my God, this, I'm standing in here. And we're like, yo, this is where we call home. So it gave us a sense of pride to be there. You know, it made us really excited to be there. Um, and just, oh my God, and then we shot it during COVID, but it, it, it was, it was a lot, <laughs> but it was amazing at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what would you say has been the most memorable scene? Cause there has been some, some scenes, but what has been your, your favorite or the most memorable scene to date? Mm-hmm. Well, my most memorable scene to date hasn't aired yet. So technically I can't say, but my second okay. most memorable scene, I can do that. My second most memorable scene is the one you guys saw from the opening scene of season two. Yes. Reason being is because on paper, you know, you see the script, you know, you see Sam and I fighting, I'm upset, and then you see the first lady comes in. But that's a long time before I I speak again. Right. And as an actor, you know, even when I'm coaching actors, I'm like half of acting is reacting. You have to really hold on to all this internal conflict that's happening inside of you. We should be able to see it on your face, see it in your body, see it in your mannerisms, even though you're not saying a word. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Right? Thank mm-hmm. you. So as I'm, as I'm standing there, Priscilla is angry. She's upset. She's mm-hmm. hurt. She's, this is unbelievable. And then the woman is taunting her in her face, but then she's at work and she can't do anything about it. The nerve, she's powerless in this moment. So all of these emotions and all of this energy is battling inside of you. And that made it one of my favorite scenes because as I'm standing there taking all of that in, these tears are just coming down my face because there's no, it had to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Something had to come out somewhere and all the, the tears are coming down and I'm that hurt, I'm that angry and there's nothing I can do. And my husband, of all people did this to me. He put me in this position and now I'm powerless and I can't do a thing. And at the end of the scene, I just looked at him and Mm -hmm. walked out. That was one of my favorite things. Wow, I have like goosebumps while you're describing (laughs) it. Because just the emotion and it was just so intense. And I love what you said Mm -hmm. about 
half of acting is reacting and you do mm -hmm. such an amazing job. Some of your, your best moments are where you're not even saying anything. You're just mm -hmm. in the moment and you're reacting and you can feel all yeah. of Priscilla's anger, her energy. You, you feel all of it. So Amen. Love thank it. you for that. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as you mentioned before, you were one of the first series to return during the pandemic. Yeah. What was that whole experience like? Okay. So initially, we were supposed to shoot earlier last year in, in like February, and everyone mm -hmm. was in, in town. We we're getting ready to go. We were like days out before, you know, everything hit and then the world was shut down. Yeah. So then we were on this long hiatus. And then Tyler Perry made us all feel so safe because he, not only did he spend so much money building different extra rooms for crew to stay there. Like he had to build like 300 plus rooms for like crew to be able to stay there so that we all can live and live. Yeah, live there. Um, we were tested in everyone. There was about 375 to 80 people there to make this production come to life from, you know, behind the scenes in front of the camera, everyone. Uh, and we're tested every other day. Like every two days, roughly everyone, everyone is tested. So you know, if you're there, and we're still covered. We're all in our PPP. We're all in our mask, our, our you know, shields and things like that. But it made me feel more safe there than being out in the world, if you will. Yeah. Because wow. we know that in this bubble that we're in, every single person we pass by, every single person, they're good. And right. so that gave us a sense. It was, it was settling. It was like, okay, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable. I feel good. I feel safe. Um, on top of that, yes, we had already shot one season, but that first season was normal. You 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 stay at your own house and then you get yourself to work every day and things like that. But it was a different energy. It was a completely different energy living where slaves used to be, wow. right? Because for those of you who don't know that Tyler Perry Studios is three, over 330 acres um, and it's an ex-military base, Confederate mm -hmm. Army base is what it is. And he bought that out and he turned this into his studio and it's one of the biggest studios in North America. So as we're living in these homes that slaves built and the detail to that and like, how gorgeous these homes are. They've been there forever and they still look great. Like they've been refurbished, yes, but the bones of them are awesome, you know? So living in these spaces, there are houses for us, there's food for us. Like we literally wanted and needed nothing. We had everything we could have ever thought, dreamed, or imagined. And even now they're saying, what are your food requirements? What are the things you like? How can we make your stay here as comfortable as possible? So when I go to a Tyler Perry Studio production, I am well taken care of. I am excited to be at work. And it's just a plethora and a sea of Black people all happy to bring the beauty of this work to life. So it was an amazing experience for sure. Oh, gosh. That sounds like such an amazing <laughs> experience. I wish I could have been part of that with you. I know. <laughs> Phenomenal. Now, let's talk about the indie film, Lola. Mm, uh, yes. We're going to yes. get into it. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> By Antoine Allen. Now, yes. could you tell us about the film and the experience of what it was like to channel the role of a boxer? Absolutely. So. Lola. Lola is based, uh, you know, the, the movie's called Lola and it's based on a woman who is trying to find herself and she gets assaulted along the way. And when that happens, she gets into self-defense classes that leads her to boxing classes and that allows her to build confidence and become ultimately who she is, which is a fighter. Um, and boxing was her saving grace. I play Lola. So I trained about four months for this movie, um, learning how to be a boxer because I had never boxed before. Um, and so these, I mean, these, <laughs> these training days are like three or four hours a day. I learned so much more about, like, I'm an athlete, yes, but that's a completely different medium. So I had, I learned so much more about the training of a boxer, the maintenance of your body. It's just as important as the training to get the skill set down. It's such a mental sport. Um, so I've always, always, I've always loved boxing, but this allowed me to have so much more affinity and appreciation for the actual boxers who get in a ring and do it for a living. Like my boxing match matches were choreographed. I'd be like, don't forget, um, you know, I'm not a real boxer in my face. Like first time. <laughs> you know, every girl I was with pretty much boxed. And I'm like, yeah, but I gotta go shoot the oval after this, so don't hit me right. for real, okay? You know. <laughs> exactly. Just a gentle reminder. <laughs> because adrenaline gets going and people get moving and you're like, oh no. Um but it was such a great experience. I love Antoine Allen. I love that he is a trailblazer in his own right and his forward thinking. Like this is a movie that we had never seen a black female boxer in a lead of a film, indie or not, 
and get a chance to see the journey of this woman becoming the strength that in the character of who she really needed to be and boxing was the sport that got her there. That's incredible. Is there any way you can take a moment and just let your fans know exactly where they can stream that movie or see it if they have not? Because Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. So real quick, the movie was selected in, in, to the um, ABFF, American Black Film Festival, so it was screened there. So you know, those of you who watched it, thank you. If you have not, it is coming out March 31st on IMDb TV. That's I Internet Movie Database, IMDb TV. Um, March 31st, which is also part of Women's Month, and we're super excited to let this come out into the world and you guys will get a chance to see the world premiere of Lola. Oh, and we are so excited. Cannot yes. wait. <laughs> You're going big bang, girl. Yes, ma'am. Now, speaking of big things, we mm -hmm. must talk about you meeting Beyonce at the opening of Tyler Perry Studio. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Can you share that story with our viewers? Absolutely. So here's the thing, you know, Tyler Perry has this, it feels like royalty, like Black Hollywood opening of, of TPS Studios, right? So literally everyone was there. Anyone you could think of, they're there. And I saw Beyonce. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. wow, Beyonce is there. The fan in me is like, oh my gosh, she's here. But the woman in me was excited to meet her just because we're from the same place. Like I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana. She's from Houston, Texas. That's like a, maybe a three hour difference. So looking at her as we're growing up and she's from the same cultural experience that I'm from, mm -hmm. hit different for me. Ooh, I see. Right? Mm -hmm. It is different for me to see um, the, the way that she's paved. She's carved her own lane, done every, any and everything she wanted to do. She dropped her manager, dropped her label. I'm going to do this. Like she is literally such a powerful creator. And for me, that's what made it hit so different because I'm like, wow, you are from where I'm from. Yeah. You have the same cultural dynamic experience that I've had. You know the things and struggles that I've been through. I want to meet you. Mm. So that experience for me was like, oh my goodness, I can't wait. So when I walked up to her, I was introduced to her. They told her who I was and she was eating, mind you. And I was like, oh my God, she's eating. Y'all gonna do this right now. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay, sorry. You know, um, and when she got up, I just, I, you know, I introduced myself again and I said, I just wanted to meet you and tell you thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate your song about brown girls, brown skin girls. I said, yeah. because that made me feel so much more empowered. I'm mm -hmm. from Louisiana. I didn't grow up believing I was beautiful. I didn't grow up thinking that because the world around me told me I was less than and I wasn't. So having songs like this, even as an adult, I'm like, oh, I love it. Yes, it hits me now. But I'm thinking about all the little brown girls in the world that's like, yes, this yes. is wonderful for them. Yes. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you. And she got up and she gave me a hug and the, the, somebody filmed it and that video went viral. And she said, thank you so much for saying that to me because that's what I want for my children. And that's why I wrote it because I want people to feel empowered. So, and that was a beautiful moment for me because I've been a fan of hers just primarily because she's from Houston. I'm like, oh, I know, okay, we're from Houston. We go to Houston all the time, you know? <laughs> and we've seen her journey from Sasha Fierce to Mrs. Carter to B to, you know, and all these yeah. different things and parts of herself that she puts into her music. And so I look up to that in a way to where I'm like, well, that's what I do when I'm selecting my roles. I want roles to really speak to the masses. I want people to see themselves in it and see what they can overcome and see the resilience in these Black women that I'm portraying that can make them change their life for the better. Mm -hmm. So meeting Beyonce was more than just like, oh my God, I'm a part of the beehive. I am. <laughs> but it was, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I am, yes. Because of the woman that she is, the woman that she represents herself to be, and because we're from the same place. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow, what an incredible experience. I saw someone in the comments say, but I'm also going to piggyback. You both look beautiful that night. I mean, oh, you just thank you. Stunning. Ah, stunning. Thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Vanessa Bell Calloway mm -hmm. recently spoke about her experience dealing with colorism during the casting of Coming to America. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you overcome it? We were kind of just talking about this a bit. Um, about how you grew up not feeling beautiful, but understanding your worth, you know, today as an adult. How do you overcome discrimination, um, I guess, against darker skin, darker, darker complexed women such as ourselves and this type of an industry? You know, it, it, it's definitely real, right? It's definitely something that I've experienced throughout my journey here, my, my, um, my acting journey. It's definitely something that's prevalent 
in my sometimes everyday life, depending on where I am, for sure. Mm -hmm. But now I've been able to overcome it because I don't give it energy. See, I'm a person that believes in words of power. You speak life over your life. So I had to ask myself, you want to speak life over your life or do you want to speak death? The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. So if the choice is mine and I speak things into existence and I believe that I could be a powerful creator, then I'm not going to give that energy to then give that life to then believe that to then allow myself to be subjected to that okay. every day. You feel me? <laughs> you better say it. Yes. So I had to, but that, that was, you know, a self-discovery moment. I, you know, I used to be the little brown girl who sat in a tub and would pray to God that he could make me just a little bit lighter. I would look at my hand and I'd be like, but the colors in between your knuckles are lighter. I'm not asking for too much, God, but if you could just make me this much so that way people won't really notice. Like, this is, these are kid thoughts, but these are real thoughts. This is, real. This is a real okay. prayer. This is a fervent prayer. Like, I'm okay. earnest in this. God, how can we change this? What can I do? And the only thing I had needed to do years later was change my mindset about my own value, my own self-worth, and validate myself. But that took a long time. I, I, didn't, I didn't really know to do that. Yes, my parents were telling me things and stuff like that, but it took me to be on my own adult journey to figure it out, to get myself into a place where now my self-discovery, my self-worth, the things that I do every single day to keep myself in this headspace is what allows me not to give anything negative energy. I don't even speak in the negative. Like, my friends will tell you. <laughs> like, it, it just, I don't even, I don't even give it energy because I believe so much in the power of your word. So I had to change the thoughts that I t told myself about myself to myself. I had to encourage myself, you know, instead of being like, oh, my butt is this. Oh, my, oh, my skin tone is this. Oh, my, oh, whatever. What if, this for men and women, what mm -hmm. if you change the thoughts to yourself and start to encourage yourself? Man, I'm grateful for the body that I have. I'm grateful for the skin that I'm in. I'm grateful for the hair that I have. I'm grateful, whatever, whatever that belief is. And all a belief is, is a thought that you tell yourself over and over and over again until you believe. Mm. And when I started to believe is when I gained the power. I tried to change my life because I changed my mind and then I ultimately changed my life. That is, whoo, that is some <laughs> fire right there. Here we go. You're talking Yes, tonight. I love Thank it. you. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is fiery. And that is so encouraging, honestly. <clears throat> because, I mean, I feel like I can relate to that, you know, mm -hmm. just being a young kid and not understanding my own worth and my value and also feeling like, man, if I was only a little bit more light skinned, if I had better hair, you know, right. all those things, I have a better life. But no, it's exactly right. what you said realizing your worth and your value and encouraging yourself. Until you're over and over again, until you're blue in the face. Yeah. So you believe that. That is, that's beautiful. Thank you for yeah, that. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, you are now part of All Black, which was formerly known as UMC. Uh, mm -hmm. You're now part of the All Black family, the team. And you are starring in the series A House Divided. Yes. Um, All Black is becoming a big, big contender in the streaming platform arena. Mm -hmm. It's becoming like Netflix for Black people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Could you tell oh, us good. about how the opportunity to join All Black, the All Black family, presented itself to you, and how it feels to now be part of that whole experience? Interesting enough, I did a film um, called My Online Valentine, mm -hmm. and Dan Garcia is a, di is a director of A House Divided. He saw me in that and then contacted me, and then that's how I got a chance to be a part of A House Divided. Um, like, as you said, it was living on UMC and now we're like, we got this, these emails like, okay, now we're all black. And it was like, you felt the transition, you felt the shift, you felt the energy shift about this, this, this bigger, like bigger, better entity that was coming yeah. on, you know, that you, you could be a part of it. Even the name instead of urban movie channel, which is great. It's like, yo, we all black. We all yes. black. Yes. Okay. I'm here yes. for it. Love it. <laughs> Um, but more, more so, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be living in a time where we can see all of these different types of shows digitized so that there's so much more opportunity for people of color. Growing up, there was only a few. You know, there was only the Diane Carrolls and then Kerry Washington came out this scandal when that was the first time there was another black female lead in like all these years from since Diane Carroll, God rest her soul, to Kerry Washington. That's just like, wow. Exactly. But now we have so many different platforms 
just like all Black, that allows us to be able to showcase our stories, tell our stories in the way that we need them to be told that are accurate. The accuracy matters and representation matters. Because growing up, I didn't see myself on television. Sure. I didn't know that I could do this in real life. Mm-hmm. So I'm, all, I'm, I'm always cognizant of that when I'm meeting people, especially young girls, because they look at me and they're like, wow, you're beautiful, you're this, and I'm, I want to do that too. And I'm like, and you can yeah, you know, but I didn't really know that I could. I didn't even know. I didn't. I didn't know that I was. I, I didn't see it. And representation matters that much. So being a part of a family like Black Entertainment te- Television or All Black. I'm on two Black networks. Okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> so being a part of both of these entities, it just makes me proud. It makes me happy. It makes me appreciative and even more grateful that now we have so much more opportunity out there for people of color. That's what excites me. You are so right. Representation, it matters. Yeah. It still matters. I mean, even as an adult, it still mm-hmm. matters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I want to be able to turn on the television, watch a movie, and, and see myself in some of these characters. You know, it, it, it matters. So Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much for what you're doing. You know, you are yeah. really representing us, girl. You thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so now... Do you have any upcoming passion projects that we can look forward to seeing you in or uh, any projects that you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so Lola 2, we're working on Lola 2 right now. Even though it comes out March 31st on IMDb TV, uh, we'll be filming Lola 2 in the summer. And I'm, that's what I've been training for now because I have to get back into my boxer brain, if you will, and boxing in my body. So I'm really excited about Lola 2. I um, have another movie um, coming out. They just changed the name of it. Oh, it was dead end. Now it's called, I forget. They just told me. Darn it. Um, oh, God. It'll come back. Oh, oh, well, it's gone. That's why when they <laughs> change names, I'm like, you changed names in my brain this long for so long. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, have a, I have like three films slated um, and then a television show called Scarlet um, that I'm going to be working on. That's, it's a pilot that I start shooting next month. Um, and as you know, we were renewed for season three of the Oval, so I will be back in Atlanta here pretty soon, shooting season three of the Oval. (laughs) Uh, So God is good. I've been working, um, and then there's some really big projects that are coming up along the way that I can't really speak about, but I'd love to, you know, tell you guys about when, when that time comes. I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm in this moment, and I know you see me thinking, my mind is going, but I'm just so grateful because, you know, I've labored. I've been here a long time doing this. I'm, I'm supremely excited to do what I do. I love it. I feel like this is my passion. It's also my purpose. I believe, I believe that. Um, but I've also been a person who I've always said for years, the dream is real. My dream is real. My dream is becoming a reality. It's like all that happens. That was my mantra. Then it went to the limitless. Now I made it more general and it's everything always works out for me. I believe that and I use that in every aspect of my life. So now that everything is rolling. Everything is picking up movie after movie, TV show after TV show, um, Mm -hmm. that I'm really, I'm getting to the level of success that I've always dreamed of. I believe it's because of the changing of my mind. I believe it's because of the work that I've labored and put in. And I believe it's because I changed my verbiage. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. So I'm really excited to be here. So after Lola, and all these other movies that are coming out, my next big thing that I'm working towards is a superhero role. So that's the one that's like, oh. we claiming it, we, 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 we speaking that thing and claiming it. Yes. And so it is. <laughs> I, can, I can see that all over you. That is phenomenal. Did somebody say booked and busy? Uh, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That is such a blessing and you deserve it all. You deserve Thank all you. of it. Absolutely. Thank now, you. We would love for you to tell us a little bit more about the Taja V. Simpson lipstick collection. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That's definitely a passion project for sure. (laughs) So I, okay, I have to tell you this quick story. Um, Mm -hmm. Forever, I never wore lipstick, any color of any kind, because I thought I was too dark and I couldn't wear it. So every anytime I tried to do something for a special occasion, your mom make you wear lipstick. And I'm like, oh, there's something good on me. Oh, I can't do it. But I didn't wear any colors because I go to school, I get bullied, and everything was about, I'm too dark, I'm too black, I'm too, insert negative word here. So a friend, friends of mine, including my mother, they would always try to get me to wear a lip color, and I just wouldn't do it. Um, so one day I was in a makeup store with my friend Crystal Powell, and... <laughs> She kept asking me again to wear lipstick, and I was like, oh, my God. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to try this lipstick on. You're going to see that it doesn't look good, and you're going to leave me alone. We good? We clear? She's like, okay, fine. Just try one. 
The lady comes over and she's like, what would you like to try? I don't know. Whatever you think look good on me. I don't know. I just want to shut her up. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, okay, so I, I got something for you. She tries it on. I put it on. And I look in the mirror. And as I looked in the mirror, I started to cry. Wow. And she was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. And Crystal was like, take it off. You don't have to put it on. It's okay. What's wrong? Yeah. And I was like, I like it. <sighs> oh. That's, that still gets me emotional every time I tell you. I have story. like goosebumps as you say that. <laughs> I almost want to cry. Yeah. Like, I feel that so much. I was like, I like it. And so she's like, You're crying because you like it? I was like, Yeah. And it was at that moment that I realized people's words, people, everything people were telling me was not true, but I never even tried it for myself. I just believed that I couldn't do it because people spoke that over me. And I said, I never again. So I bought a purple, I bought a pink, I bought a red, and I just started wearing lip color. And it became a whole thing. Like, oh, I'm just going to do this thing. And I just was in this whole new world of like, wow. I realized I was limiting myself of what other people were saying to me about me because I believed it. Mm -hmm. You heard it so much, you started to believe it. So when it became time for me to come out with my, lip, my lipstick collection, we had five, six colors, and it was Valentine's Day last year, and we decided to settle on three. And this, this wasn't even by, this is by happenstance, but I think it's divine intervention. The three that we ended up selecting were purple, red, and pink, which happened to be <laughs> my first three lipstick colors that I had ever purchased in my entire life. So the purple was called Triple Threat, the red was called Leading Lady, and the pink was called Lights, Camera, Action. And you guys can get that on TajaVSimpson.com. So that's the brand story for the lipstick collection. That's how it came about. When I tell you that is so beautiful, that is so inspiring for black women everywhere. Like I, I honestly yeah. did almost well up with tears because mm -hmm. it's just so relatable to almost, yeah. I feel like every little black girl story, like we've always been told that we can't, 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 especially when it comes to fashion and taking chances and taking risks. We've always mm -hmm. been told that, you know, you know, black girls, we can't get away with certain things. But mm -hmm. to hear you say that and experience that and then turn it around and come up with your own brand of lipstick. <laughs> I mean, what? That is phenomenal. Yeah. We will, Black Simba Now will definitely be supporting. I can't wait to get my Tasha B. Simpson collection. Yes. Thank you, doll. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Right now we're working on some lip glosses um, and just it's, you know, it's, it's truly a passion project. It's a labor of love. And, and you're right, as Black women and Black girls, that's what we've been told our whole life. But I had to learn that I had to be bold. I needed to be me. I needed to be authentic and be the beautiful woman that I am. God's created me to be like this. And, I, and that's what I'm going to be. I'm perfect, holy, complete by myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to learn that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this has been great. I have one more question for you. Yeah. Now, giving each other our flowers is something that I think is so important to do while we're still here. Don't wait until that special person passes away to put the roses on the grave. Do it now. You know, show them how much you care right now today. So if you could give any person their flowers, any person mm -hmm. who's important to you or who, or who you care about, who would that person be and why? Mm, that's great. Interesting enough, I did a video about giving a person your flowers rather than still here about two weeks ago. <laughs> That's what I'm not saying. Come on, I love how in sync we are. If you're not saying it. Yes, I love it. Um, who would I give flowers to? Man, that's good. It's a hard question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, got it. You said to give me a second to get it together. Okay. <laughs> So I would give flowers to my father. Wow. Oh, God. I'm going to do this without crying. Watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. The Black out fan, we got you. It's a safe place. Thank you. Thank you, love. But I would give it to my father because my father has always been my biggest cheerleader. My parents are still together. Praise the Lord. Um, my father has, and, and my mother have both been like my biggest cheerleaders, right? My dad is anything I've played, you know, any sport, he's always been a coach or a manager. He's there every day. He's going to be there to support. I now realize as an adult that support is an action. Right. And my father was always showing me that type of action in his everyday life by showing up and being not only, a, not only my father, but also my dad, right? Mm. So I'm so grateful to him because 
he sacrificed so much. He's given up so much for his children, as oftentimes parents do. Mm -hmm. And my biggest goal in life has been to retire my parents and, and be like, hey, just go live however you want to live. And I'm almost at that goal. So I'm mm -hmm. really excited to be able to do that. I love them so much. And my dad, you know, we have this little thing that we say, I love you oodles and boodles. <laughs> 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 but it's only for me and my dad. It's not for me and my mom. Like, me and my dad be like, you know, your mom is jealous, right? I'd be like, chill, get over it. I love you, Udis and Udis, too. You know, like, it's a cute little thing that we do. We've been doing it for a very long time. And so yeah. I would give flowers to my dad. Yeah. That is so beautiful. That's, that's real. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so open and honest and transparent yeah. and energetic and fun for us this evening. You've been phenomenal. This has been so wonderful. And we thank you for your time. Before you leave, can you yeah. tell us all oh, one more time where we can purchase your uh, your lip kit, where we can follow you on social media, and where mm -hmm. we can watch the Oval on BET? Yes, ma'am. First of all, thank you guys so much for tuning into this IG Live. I'm so we're, we're both so grateful for your time. Again, I'm Taja V. Simpson. You can purchase any of my lipsticks at TajaVSimpson.com. That's T-A-J-A-V Simpson.com. Um, you can watch The Oval on Tuesday nights at 8, 9 Central, 9, 8 Central, only on BET. Yeah. Uh, what was the third thing you said? It was a, it was a, a, a lovely lipstick. one. Lipstick Oval. Oh, and you can follow me on all things social oh, media. It. Yeah. <laughs> at Taja B. Simpson, T-A-J-A-V. That, literally, that's my brain. My brain is me, Taja B. Simpson. Be sure to turn on your post notifications to stay up to date because I put updates up every day. So, yeah, that's me. Thank you guys so much. We love it. Thank you. You stay beautiful. Stay blessed. Thank you to all you all for watching. Make sure that you're following Taja B. Simpson. Yeah. Uh, make sure you're following Black Cinema now. And you can follow mm -hmm. me, your host, over at H. Wood Gems. And until next time, you all, Taja, please take care. Yes, thank you so much. You were amazing. I appreciate thank you greatly. Thank absolutely. you. Bye-bye. All right, bye.